Welcome to Never Sleep Again, your source for sci-fi and horror movie reviews. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Veronica. And today we will be reviewing Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022. Yes. So this was a movie that was put on Netflix and it basically took us straight from the original. It was a direct sequel. Direct sequel to the original. Yep. So let's go ahead and kind of review right, let's get into it this is yeah. full of spoilers so if you have not watched the movie already uh please go and watch it or you know if you don't really care just come and hang out with <laughs> <Yep>. us <laughs> all right so this movie starts off with um uh, we have some kind of young people i guess you'd say they're millennials um it's a car with millennials Probably young and millennials and young, some gen z yeah some, some gen, gen z, z. Yeah. uh we start off meeting the character uh, lila and she's at a gas station. They've been on the road for some hours traveling from Austin. And um, they're actually going to be auctioning off buildings, properties within this town center. And uh, we come to find out later that there is a very special person who lives, <laughs> lives in this problem. town. <laughs> yeah. What, what a coincidence. <laughs> what a coincidence, right? <laughs> well, we meet Lila and then we also meet the rest of the gang. That includes Dante. Um, we also have Mel, who is Lila's older sister. And we have Ruth, who is Dante's fiance. So the group arrives in Harlow where we meet Richter and Jenny. Richter is like a contractor that they've been corresponding with before mm -hmm. getting there. Earlier, they had a little bit of a scuffle with him at a gas station before knowing that it was the same guy so that part was pretty funny mm -hmm. so jenny owns the orphanage where in her care seems to be this tall shadowy figure this is obviously leatherface <laughs> yes <laughs> this is obviously leatherface without the mask but they they seem to kind of obscure his face a little bit so you never really you don't ever really see him full on for that long mm -hmm. so shortly after we meet richter and jenny um, Jenny, Jenny dies from heart complications because she's upset that they're there to claim her house, right. and they didn't know she lived there, mm -hmm. and so so that that just really gets her all worked up, and she she uh, she dies while in transport with um, the EMTs. During this time, Leatherface, who is by her side he begins to get upset and he just starts to go off on everybody who's <laughs> who's in the van yeah. during transport we have our first kill of right, the movie. we have our first kill of the movie those are the two um emt slash police officers they're they're police officers plus they are the emts in uh, apparently in in harlow yeah. in, in harlow so he kills the police and he kills ruth now, back at the town center, the gang has no idea what just transpired with Leatherface. Um, they didn't even know that was Leatherface. The only thing they do know is that Jenny did die on the way to the hospital. Um, so they're there, and uh, Richter, he finds out what happened with yeah, Jenny. Pisses and him off. <laughs> it really does, because they're claiming that they, they own the deed to the house, and Jenny is saying she worked things out with the bank. That's what she had said. So what does he do? He says, show me the deed. And he takes their bus keys away. So he's not letting them leave. And um, they basically have to stay there until they can prove to him that they do, in fact, own this house. By this point, we have a group of like young millennials. Uh, all just flooding you know, Gen Harlow. Z's. Yeah, they're just flooding they're Harlow, hoping to open up like, you know, these kind of food trucks, trendy shops. Vendors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're there. They're... They really pulled up, didn't they? They had like charcoal grills. They out really did. Everything. They had a cookout and yeah. music going. <laughs> so basically, Richter's holding these keys hostage. So uh, Dante yeah. and Mel. They go back to Ginny's house because Dante wasn't able to produce a deed. And so they go there just to see if maybe she does in fact have a copy. And while there, 
lo and behold, Mel does find the paperwork. So Ginny actually did own the house. And then we get our next kill. Leatherface shows up. Uh, well, he attacks Dante. He doesn't right. quite kill him yet. He dies a little bit later. <laughs> he dies a little later. But he's he's pretty much dead. At yeah. That point. There's, I mean, I don't know how you can come back from he, that. He doesn't survive. Right. <laughs> Long story short. And Mel hides. She hides under the bed upstairs. Richter actually somehow makes his way into the house and he faces off with Leatherface. Yeah, so during this face off with Leatherface is where, you know, Richter does, I, I would say he does pretty good and I wanted to see more from this character. Unfortunately, Leatherface kills Richter, but just as he's about to kill him, he... I think I believe he sees Mel under the bed. Yeah. And Richter sees Mel under the bed and he's able to kind of just put the keys in her direction. How Leatherface didn't clearly see this oh. is um beyond me, but yeah, that's what happens and then Leatherface <laughs> bashes his head in. <laughs> yes. By this point, uh, the whole group of millennials, Gen Zers, they're in the bus. It's like a party bus. And they're just parting away. Mel runs out of the house. She's able to evade Leatherface. She runs into the bus and she's just stunned. She's hysterical. in shock. She's hysterical. Yeah. She finds her sister Lila and then Leatherface shows up. And he begins hacking away at all of the guests in the bus. Everyone dies, except for Lila and Mel. Mel, they escape through the bathroom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep, they lock themselves in the bathroom and they're able to escape through a hatch in the roof. Yeah, it's like during that, but during that scene, Leatherface, he almost kills, he almost successfully kills Mel, mm -hmm. but because of a corkscrew that she had from the beginning, she's able to kind of stab his arm and, right. and get away. Um, so, you know, from this point in the movie, it's pretty much Leatherface just trying to get Lila and Mel, <laughs> yep. and we see them, you know, we see them get out of these sticky situations mm -hmm. with Leatherface and then Sally shows up mm -hmm. also. We were we were shown Sally a little bit earlier in the movie but up until this point she doesn't really do anything so she shows up with a gun and she's all like well she shows up with a rifle and, and a pistol and she's all like hey you remember me Leatherface <laughs> and she gets all she gets all upset that <laughs> that Leatherface doesn't no. remember her, and it's, and I'm just thinking, well, you know, it was, what was that like? The Nearly 70s? 50 like, years ago. It like, was the 70s. Yes. Right? So it's just like, yeah, Sally doesn't remember. <laughs> her, so. Yeah. So, <laughs> so she shows up just in the nick of time to and sort of distracts Leatherface from from uh, Lila and Mel. Mm -hmm. She she um tells them to stay in her car yeah, and she locks them she in locks there. them in the car and she goes to face off with Leatherface. It doesn't really go that well. She comes back and gives them the keys and tells and tells them to get out of there pronto. Mm -hmm. To which they don't really listen. <laughs> no. Sally gets into a fight with with um, Leatherface. Leatherface, of course, gets the upper hand in this matter and. And and um, we think that Sally's dead at this point, only to find out later when now Lila and Mel are facing off with Leatherface again that she has just a little bit more life left in her and instructs Lila to say, hey, you know, if you run now, he's going to keep running after you. Mm -hmm. So they get into the car again to try to, you know, to try to... I guess what hit Leatherface with yeah. the car. This doesn't work out so well. It ends up with it ends up with with Melody kind of getting stuck in the car and she tells Lila to go and save herself. And and so, you know, Lila, we think Lila's running off, but Lila comes back just as Leatherface is about to kill Mel mm -hmm. and you know, almost shoots him gun malfunctions <laughs> the gun the, no no gun doesn't malfunction it just wasn't loaded right something uh, like something that, yeah. happened with the something gun. happened with the gun gun didn't work <laughs> <laughs> the gun didn't work uh they ultimately seem to defeat 
Leatherface mm -hmm. after this, and we're, we're thinking that we're getting a happy ending. The two sisters are driving off in a yeah. car, set to take them back to Austin. But... Yep. <laughs> Leatherface pops up, and he smashes through the window where Mel is sitting, right. and he pulls her out of the car. Meanwhile, this is a self-driving car, so Lila is just kind of trapped in the car as a truck car is driving away, yeah. watches in horror as Leatherface decapitates her sister. Yeah, because... Why not? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Why not? And then Leatherface does his chainsaw dance, and that's the we reach the end, end credits of the movie. Yeah. So <laughs> interesting. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, so, mm. so you know, you know what we do here by now. If you've watched any of our movies before, so what worked for you? Okay. Um, a couple of things worked for me. I felt like the gore looked very realistic yeah um, they did a really great job with that the blood the guts especially the scene where unfortunately richter i actually like that character yeah he got his head bashed in with some kind of uh hammer <laughs> hammer tool that <laughs> that that leatherface had and he really went in he was he really, wailing yeah. on his head like yeah, it you, looked you got disgusting I think you. I think you got him. You got exactly. Him. <laughs> it was one of those moments. Yes, I thought they did a great job with that. Um, you know, I like the fact that it turns out that uh oh, Jenny was actually telling the truth. She owned yeah. that property, and you know, in, in movies like this, you would usually see the stars of the movie as being the ones who are like constantly in the right. right. And it's like no, they were absolutely wrong. They really caused this woman to have a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, someone did point out that, you no, know, heart disease heart <laughs> gave dis her a heart attack. <laughs> it's like, no, heart disease. It's like, you killed, we killed her. Yes. No, heart disease killed her. Right. <laughs> but at yeah. the same time, she would not have been in distress for that to have affected her in such a way if they did not continuously press the issue that it was not her home. So I like that aspect of it. Um, I think that made it interesting. Um, how about you? Are there things you liked about the movie? I'd actually like to start with that point. I, I appreciated that they didn't really make one side really wrong mm -hmm. more than the other. It was really, the bank really screwed up. Right. The bank really screwed up. They thought that they had the deed. They thought that this woman would be moved out. She knew nothing about this. She thought she cleared something up with the bank. And so it it created for a complex situation. Uh, it made for a complex point of conflict within the movie, which which looking back, I, c I can appreciate that they did something like that. And you know, before getting to the the mindless gore and slash. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I I liked that. In the end, you know, in the end, a few of the characters, including Melody, turned out to be decent people instead of okay here here comes the annoying millennials and gen z's coming in here they're they're these dirty dirty yeah. gentrifying i'm people. so sorry we are millennials <laughs> right and that's how they always make us out to be they always make us out to be awful people in movies it's just <laughs> exactly. not the case so so I, I like that they showed it i like that they showed that younger diverse groups of people could also be the ones gentrifying a neighborhood right instead of it being spun a different way i appreciated that mm -hmm. about the movie i liked the bus scene <laughs> <laughs> i liked the bus scene in there i thought it was i thought it was funny i i love the i love the part about the guys he has the camera out and he's like you try anything you're canceled bro <laughs> and then and then the the chainsaw revs up um there i think i think leatherface had a had a a leg in his hand and yeah. he just like and he just like <laughs> he, it's, it's not like he just like swings it all mm. dramatically he's just casually just like lifting it up and putting it out of the way i yeah. thought i thought that that was hilarious <laughs> I, I thought that was good the fight between richter and leatherface you mentioned that yeah, yeah but i i thought their fight was was kind of cool i wish that they could have extended that scene mm -hmm. to create an effect where you know like a dwarfing effect where we see richter as this 
as this strong and capable individual. He's kind of tall. He appears to be kind of tall. And we get to see that even somebody like that is not a match for Leatherface. And, and that's cool because if, you know, a horror movie's not going to really work if you think, if you're able to just size up the boogeyman in this situation yeah. and be like, yeah, I can take him. Right. So I, I appreciate I appreciated that they actually made uh, Leatherface really menacing in this, worthy of the name Leatherface. So what didn't work for you? Mm, okay. So there were <laughs> a few things that did not work for me in this movie. Uh, one of those things was named Catherine. <laughs> She's from the bank. Right. And uh, that's kind of all we Catherine. know about her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> she showed up with the group of other people that were there to kind of purchase some of the properties in the town. And there's a scene where Dante had been attacked. He somehow made his way outside and she saw Dante with his face, you know, pretty much, right. you know, just run through. Right. How do you see somebody that you know by name? with your there's like a whole trench in his face right and she didn't think to say hey everybody dante's dead yeah and in such a horrible way in such a horrible way somebody clearly did that right. his face is like hanging off she goes into the bus and what does she do she says don't go out there <laughs> and they're like why and she's like i don't know <laughs> it's like um you want to be a little more descriptive than that because if somebody's just telling me not to go somewhere you know I'm going to want to know why to make my own judgment calls to whether or not it's safe. I felt like she could have done more to warn the people on the bus. It's like the people continued to party like nothing was happening. They had no idea. And this is something that continued to happen throughout, throughout the, movie. the entire movie. <laughs> because then we see Mel rush onto the bus and she's looking scared. Same thing. You know, same thing. She's covered in poop. And, uh, you know, she doesn't utter any words to warn anybody about the fact that there is this crazed psychopath out there killing people or attempting to kill people right. nothing and so nothing. i feel like the people on the bus they could have been forewarned and at that point they could have left because mel did have the keys she came back with the keys and that didn't happen and so that kind of pissed me off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was pretty stupid. Right. People made some really stupid decisions in this movie. They really did. Um, speaking of which, Sally Hardesty, and um, you know, there are a few things about that character and the character's decisions that didn't work for me. I'm only really going to touch on this one though, because I know you have more to say <laughs> about her. I, I do. I do. <laughs> but when she finally arrives in Harlow, first she's like. Um, you know, she's waited 50 years for this moment. And I'm like, okay. So she arrives in Harlow. She feels like she has a pretty strong lead now and that this is in fact the leather face that killed her friends all those years ago. She meets up with him in the room of the house. And you mentioned this before. Um, she's like, do you remember me? And of course he does it. <laughs> it's like she she looks like a completely different person. It's 50 years later. And so she sits there in stunned silence long enough for him to slowly pick up his chainsaw and just walk on by here. He's not even really interested in, in uh. attacking her. <laughs> Meanwhile, like she has a shotgun in her hands. Like you said, she also had a pistol, which we kind of saw in the back of her pants and she does nothing. She gives this man enough time to go down the stairs in the house, walk down the street, and start terrorizing the girls that she locked in her car before she actually shows up outside and tries to stop him. It made absolutely no sense. Zero. No, zero. <laughs> I, she, she could have killed him. She had the chance and she didn't. So uh, that was very unrealistic to me. I didn't care for that. I like it when characters make um, more realistic decisions, you know, a way that a person might normally act if they're encountered, if they're facing off in situations like this. So I didn't care for that. Um, there are a bunch of things concerning <laughs> Sally that I didn't care, <laughs> that yeah. I didn't care for. Um, I did not like the fact that Mel died at the end. 
Um, yeah, it was a waste. I feel like it was waste. I did prefer her character over Lila's, so I don't know, maybe I'm just being biased, but <laughs> I feel like if they were going to kill one of the characters, maybe let it be Lila out of the two sisters, or just let them both go on. I don't like this trope where there has to be, you know, just one survivor. One survivor. Like, I know the final girl trope has been done, and it's, you know, it's steeped in you know the horror genre and i love that that's fine but i just felt for this movie let this two sisters live you know yes yeah, i would have liked the that circumstances right yep so i did not care for that at all and there's just one more thing that i'm going to touch on and this was just pretty disappointing i mean maybe they meant it as like you know maybe they did it to be kind of humorous and just to kind of amplify the times we're living in now but man the social commentary was thick <laughs> like we talked about the bus scene and right. you know people are taking out their phones and bringing up cancel culture and you've got gentrification happening of this town with millennials and gen z's yeah. and they're all like kind of hipster and and then you and trendy and then you have um other issues like um what did they bring up? Try because there was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot. Um, there was one more thing that I. Oh yes, the school shooting. Lila was a victim of a school shooting, which was just kind of really random. Yeah, like I felt very. like it was just thrown in there and just kind of forced. But so she had Added a little. Nothing to the movie. No, not really. Yeah. No, we could have taken that out, and it would not have changed the story one bit. So she had a little bit of PTSD, it would seem, um, from the events that transpired. She had a bullet wound, but like you said, really did not add to the movie. And then um, on top of that, we have Dante, who makes like a police shooting kind of reference when they get pulled over by the yeah, cops. So it's really just, did. you know, these issues are real. These obviously these issues um, affect a lot of people, but to have all of this just thrown into this short slasher film it was just too much for me i'm sorry it was done in a tasteless way in my opinion it was just in my face so i didn't care for that just too much they i think i think they tried i saw what they were trying to do but i think it was just too much for the film that's supposed to be about leatherface getting those kills right right so maybe maybe if they took one or two of those points and put it into the movie with the with the mm -hmm. point you made about um her being uh, lila being a school shooting survivor yeah. i think they could have made that one work um but we had no payoff for it and so i guess that's gonna go into my I guess that's gonna be my first yes. thing. We didn't really we got the setup with Lila with her being a survival of survivor of a school shooting, but we didn't get any payoff. She she got the gun in her hand, and you know earlier we saw that she kind of had she was having a little bit of an episode while looking at the gun, and she had a painful flashback to the shooting. Uh, maybe they could have showed her overcome it and maybe show the gun work maybe maybe change the movie so that she saves her sister's life using the gun or take the gun part out entirely i, I don't know but <laughs> just they had too many points in there that it just got really it just got really confusing because mm -hmm. of the type of movie i didn't like that this now the next complaint's a big one I didn't like that Leatherface acted so much like Mike Myers. Yeah. I, I prefer that Mike Myers just be Mike Myers and Leatherface just be Leatherface. We they didn't really show us any of of Leatherface's family members, which was originally a big part of of at least from what I remember of, of the other of the other Texas chainsaw movies they went more into Leatherface's family and mm -hmm. how they kind of they kind of use him and kind of abuse him I wish that they could have shown more of that instead of just this woman who's supposed to be his mom or caretaker and there I don't think that it could have been his mom from the no, first movie I don't think 
that sound. It had to be just some caretaker that he got on the way. At least that's what would make sense. At least that's what would make sense to me. But yes, back to the point is we show Leatherface just kind of sitting there in the darkness, hanging back and waiting for people to, you know, set them, you know, set themselves up into a trap. Almost like he's setting the trap for them. That's just not really, that doesn't really scream Leatherface to me. Maybe Jason, but it's definitely too much like Mike Myers. And then Sally's just like Laurie Schroe from the Halloween movies, or more, or rather, Halloween, you know, Halloween 2018 and yeah. Halloween Kills, where she's mm-hmm. just, you know, she's back. But she's not. She's not that little girl anymore. No. <laughs> she's she's older and she's uh. tough. And you know that's cool for Laurie Schroed. That makes sense for Laurie Schroed. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't really make sense for me for for Sally, because we we had no inclination in the first movie in the first in the first Texas Chainsaw. We had no inclination that this is what Sally would become. Lori, it made a lot of it made a lot more sense because Lori immediately fought Mike Myers. Right. She immediately fought back. She was scared, but really not that scared. We see Sally run, and at the end of the movie, uh, we don't even Sally doesn't really come off as somebody who's just altogether sane mm-hmm. anymore. As she's screaming, crying, and laughing in the back of that pickup truck. And, you know, it just, I don't know. I feel like they could have done something better uh, with the character, especially since the original actress who played that character has since passed. Um, You know, Sally's death in the movie made no sense. I'm no medical expert, but I'm going to go ahead and just assume (laughs) that if somebody takes a chainsaw and runs it through your torso and it comes out the other side they oh. lift you up in the air and they shake it around yes. and then they take you and they throw you uh. and you're like 70 something years old already to begin with before the fight started and for whatever reason at 70 you decided that you're gonna fight a madman with a chainsaw who's like five like five feet taller than you <laughs> <laughs> so when that happened in the movie to sally she still wasn't dead Mm-mm. she still wasn't dead that made absolutely no sense she was able to speak in complete sentences after being picked up with a chainsaw the chainsaw's running it's running and then and then throw through her into a pile of trash uh, at that point she should have been dead yeah. i thought that that was silly she's given this use the force speech right to, to yes. lila <laughs> so it it was weird i thought it was pretty uh i thought it was pretty funny that they that they put that in there like i said i don't know maybe some of you are medical experts you can let us know in the comments <laughs> if if that would be something that would instantly yeah kill you take you off the senses i mean about that use the force speech she talked about how like he would always be chasing you basically like you'd always be running and it's like no sally he wasn't thinking about you he was living peacefully with his mama and in this orphanage in this sleepy little town and he wasn't thinking anything about you so yeah the, <laughs> even like... the kills stopped he wasn't really yes. a threat to yeah he wasn't even really a threat no. to anybody else so her speech made no sense no, not I, at all. I blame i blame the editing room on this <laughs> one i think that was something that wasn't supposed to make it in to the movie and then ended it made uh, it into so the that's movie. the reason <laughs> i didn't like that richter died mm. i felt I felt like there should have been something in the movie, some plot that that was pretty much okay. The people from the town, some people from the town and some people from that they referred to as gentries because they're gentrifying, that they learned how to work together to try to stop the real threat, mm-hmm. which is Leatherface, and then maybe at the end of the movie show them 
you know, show them working together in the town yeah. or something, something like that. I would have liked that. And it would have been cool to see that tie together because we get the idea that Richter doesn't really like these people mm -hmm. and they were kind of disrespectful to Richter too. And so it would have been cool to see them work together to defeat Leatherface. That would have been really nice, yeah, yeah. actually. I would have liked right, that. Right, right. Yeah. Right. And at least in the original movie, and, and sorry to make this a comparison to the original movie, like, that's not what this is. We're reviewing Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022, but at least at the end of the original, we see Sally escape, and she, you know, she's laughing. It's kind of a happy ending because she escapes. The end of this movie kind of robbed us from a more satisfying ending as you so eloquently put we see mel get her head chopped off yeah. so that was that was uh you know i, I don't really care for that ending mm -hmm. it, it was it's not the thing that was a deal breaker for me i will say that <laughs> uh you know yeah what can i what can i say it's just uh, <laughs> there is a there is a lot of things that i didn't really care for yeah. with this particular movie so we come to the part where yeah. we're gonna go ahead and give our rating for this movie so what say you yeah i'm gonna give this one a bargain bin um i feel like the gore was great they did a really great job oh i mentioned the richter scene but also dante with you know his face kind of being slashed yeah. and hanging off i thought they did a great job yeah. with just you know making it look realistic yeah it didn't look like a cartoon it didn't mm -hmm. they didn't do things where where there's embarrassing dummies right and there's so there's nothing like that yeah, so, yeah it didn't seem um low budget at all the production didn't no. seem low budget which is probably why i'm not giving it a, a dumpster fire <laughs> because of these things and i'm only giving it a bargain bin which is still pretty low but I feel like they didn't do justice to any of the characters. Right. And um, the story could have been better. So uh, I'm sorry. I'm rating this one pretty hard because of all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies we have. If you're going to put out another one, at least make it better than those. And I was disappointed. Right. Yeah, I got to agree. I really wanted to give this movie a, a stream it because it's not... It's not the worst horror movie that I've ever seen. And I think most people could agree to at least that. However, unfortunately, I gotta go with the bargain bin this time. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking you're gonna rate it higher than me, okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I had decided that before this review. I was just like, oh yeah, I had to keep thinking about it, gotta get the bargain bin. Yeah. So. All right, well, you know, it's still worth watching so you can make your own decisions. You can. Tell us what you think about it. Would you rate it a bargain bin? Would you rate it higher? Maybe you would rate it, stream it, or worth the money. Let us know in the comments. We would love to hear from you. Um, please, also, don't forget to like and comment on this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you are not already a subscriber of Never Sleep Again. And, uh, you know, we'll continue to put out more and more movie reviews trailer reviews and more well that's all the time we have for today you have been watching never sleep again i'm jonathan and i'm veronica stay, stay awake, awake.